Hello everybody. Now the topic for discussion is orthopedic appliances. Actually, in orthodontics, we use two types of forces. One is orthodontic force, another is orthopedic force. Orthodontic force usually ranges between 50 to 100 grams and brings about movement of the teeth. Whereas orthopedic force usually ranges from 400 grams or beyond that and it brings about the changes of the deep skeletal structures. Now the basis for orthopedic appliances is two. Amount of force and duration of force. As I've already said that amount of force is usually more than 400 grams or 400 grams of force. And duration usually to bring about skeletal changes, the duration of force application should be as less as 12 to 14 hours per day. Let us know about each uh, and every of these orthopedic appliances in detail. First coming to head gear. Head gear is one of the most commonly used orthopedic appliances, particularly used during the growth period and it is used to restrict the growth of the maxilla. Particularly in case of class 2 malocclusions, wherein there is a mandible will be of normal growth, but there will be excessive growth of the maxilla. To further restrict the growth of this maxilla, headgears are used. Headgear consists of following components, face bow, force element, head cap or cervical strap. In this figure we can see this is a headgear. What exactly is face bow? Face bow is nothing but a metallic component. It consists of two, uh, uh, two bows, an outer bow and an inner bow. Both outer bow and inner bow are connected by means of a junction. Here we can see outer bow in this figure, metallic outer bow, inner bow, both connected by means of a junction. Outer bow is actually contoured according to the contour of the face. The ends of it is modified in the form of a hook. These modifications are actually done so as to engage the force elements. Outer bow can be short, long, medium. Short outer bow means outer bow shorter than inner bow. Medium means inner bow and outer bow both of equal length and long means outer bow longer than inner bow. Next is inner bow. Inner bow is contoured according to the dental arch and goes into the buccal tubes of the molars. In, in, the, uh, in a mesial, just mesial to the molars, stops are, stops are made in the inner bow so as to prevent the sliding of this inner bow through the buccal tubes. Next is force element. The force element can be elastics, springs or other stretchable materials. Next is head cap or cervical strap. The head cap or the cervical strap is the actual anchorage unit. With the help of this, forces are delivered through, uh, forces are delivered by strap. Anchorage is taken from this head cap or cervical strap. Forces are given from these elastics and it is transferred to the dentition and the skeletal structure by means of outer bone inner bone. What are the principles in the use of headgears? First is center of resistance of dentition. The center of resistance of molar is actually at the mid root area. Hence, whenever the forces are passed through this mid root area of the molar, it will cause pure translation or the distal movement of the molar. When it passes from above this center of resistance, it will cause distal tipping of the roots. When it passes from below the center of resistance, it will cause distal tipping of the crown portion. Next is center of resistance of maxilla. Not only the center of resistance of dentition should be taken into consideration, but also the center of resistance of the entire maxilla should be taken into consideration. The center of resistance of maxilla is usually at uh, posterior superior aspect of zygomatico maxillary suture. Roughly, it is at the uh, uh, between the roots of the premolars. Again, the same thing. When it passes through the center of resistance, it will bring about pure distal translation of the maxilla. If it passes from above or below, it will cause rotation of the maxilla. The point of origin of force. The point of origin of force have to be taken into consideration like whether it is originated from occipit or from the cervical area. Usually the forces where they are originated from occipital region, it will cause intrusion as well as distal tipping of the posterior teeth, maxillary, maxillary posterior teeth. If it is originated from cervical area, it will cause extrusion as well as distal tipping of the maxillary posterior teeth. Next is point of attachment of force. As I have already said that the distal ends of the outer bow is modified in the form of hooks. So this is the point of attachment of force. By altering the, this length of this outer bow, the amount of action of force, direction of action of force can be altered. What are the various types of headgears? It can be cervical headgear, occipital headgear and combination headgears. Cervical headgears usually gains anchorage from the cervical area of the neck. And whenever the forces are acting through this area, it will cause not only distal tipping of the molars but also cause a little bit extrusion of the posteriors. On the other hand, if the point of origin is from the occipital area, 
it will cause intrusion of the posteriors as well as distal tipping and in certain circumstances we even require combination head gates where an occipital plus cervical area are taken as the anchoring unit and under those circumstances it will cause a little bit intrusion but a net more distal movement of the teeth will be seen this is occipital head gear this is combination head gear what are the uses of head gears head gears are not only used to bring about the distal movement of the maxilla but along with this orthopedic effect of distal movement of the maxilla it can be even used for anchorage augmentation for distalization of molar by changing the position of the tubes we can even bring about molar rotation it can also be used for space maintenance next is face mask this is another most commonly used orthopedic appliance and this is mainly indicated under those circumstances wherein we even want to achieve protraction of the maxilla and we even want to create a retrusive or the distal force on the mandible the sites of anchorage of face mask is chin forehead and the combination of chin and forehead whenever chin is used it will usually whenever the anchorage is taken from the chin it will cause a little bit abnormal forces acting on the condyle so uh, this is the a bit disadvantage of this face mask therapy when it is taken from the skull it is more inconvenience for the patient or it will be it is more uncomfortable for the patient what are the various parts of face mask it consists of chin cup chin cup can be either uh, it is available uh, uh, even preform or it can be fabricated according to the patient with the help of by taking impression and then fabricating with the help of acrylic chin cup will help to gain anchorage from the chin next is forehead cap it will help to gain anchorage from the forehead various types various diameter of elastics are used to continuously protract the maxilla an intraoral appliance is there this intraoral appliance is fabricated with the help of cold cure or heat cure acrylic at the area of molar two hooks are fabricated because the elastics from this face mask it is inserted into the it is attached onto these hooks so it will continuously bring the maxilla in a forward direction and the last is the metal frame which will connect all these components here we can see in this diagram forehead cap is there chin cup is there we can see uh, there is presence of these elastics the elastics are attached to this force element from, from outside it is attached inside to these hooks and continuously this is an adjustable this uh, position of these extra oral uh, uh, the, uh, extra oral this uh, rods is adjustable it can be adjusted and this is a long metal frame which connect all this forehead cap chin cap and this extra uh, extra oral metal rods next is chin cup chin cup is the most traditional uh, orthopedic appliance which was mostly used to prevent uh, in the patients who are having continuous forward growth of the mandible it will restrict the growth of the mandible in downward and forward direction there are various types of chin cup available chin cups can be occipital pull chin cup and vertical pull chin cup in case of occipital pull chin cup we can see that it takes anchorage from the occiput with the help of uh, elastics uh, it is attached to the chin cup chin cups are mostly used in conjunction with head gears here we can see that it, this type of chin cup is gaining anchorage from the occiput then an elastic uh, assembly is there which is attached anterior to the chin cup this chin cup can be fabricated with the help of acrylic apart from this we can even see vertical pull chin cup vertical pull chin cup uh, uh, is um, gains anchorage not from the occiput but from the parietal bones of the skull this vertical pull chin cup not only causes uh, not re restricts the growth of the mandible in downward and forward or the forward direction but also causes intrusion of the teeth but because of the vertical pull chin cup there will be more strain which is seen on the temporomandibular joint hence it has to be used very cautiously in patients who are having temporomandibular joint disorders how is the fabrication of chin cup chin cup as i have already said that it can be available commercially preform or it can be fabricated by using heat cure or cold cure acrylic resin force magnitude and duration of wear the force magnitude initially when it is given usually 150 to 300 grams of force is given but slowly it can be increased to 450 to 700 grams of force per site and the duration of wear is nearly 12 to 14 hours per day it has to be wet to bring about the orthopedic changes so this was in detail about the three orthopedic appliances that is first headgear second is face mask or reversible headgear and third is chin cup thank you